Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the River Cats Dynasty as we take on our rival in Missouri Tech. Former quarterback Pat Perez is in the crowd for Missouri Tech. This is one of the biggest games they've had in quite a few years. Pat Perez has moved on to the NFL, where he is a rookie quarterback for the Chicago Bears. He led them to the playoffs in an NFC North victory. So he got the Bears right back on top. I'm glad to see a Missouri Tech alum doing fine in the NFL. Now, let's get back to the task at hand. Missouri Tech is led by Sean Caldwell, a senior quarterback who is pretty good. So he is obviously leading them to a one-loss season in a 7-1 record in the top 10 ranking. And then he gets to throw to Quentin Sands, who is a pretty good receiver. I think he's making that third-year starter leap because he scored a couple of times as a freshman. He got some more playing time last season, and now he is their number one target. So here we are on the road, and let's see if the St. Louis State Rivercats can get it done once more. We are currently on a seven-game winning streak after losing the home opener to Florida. So here we are with the ball. Dunn Carmichael throws the left side, and he misses Zane Storm, who's been going off quite a bit in the last few games, a couple of 100-yard games. So now third and 10, we air it out deep to St. Pierre, and it's going to be picked off. We overthrow him deep in Missouri Tech. Causes a turnover on the first drive. 0 for 3 for Dunn Carmichael on that first drive, and it ends in an interception. So here is Caldwell out onto the field in the first play. He goes down. How about Jonathan Thousand in the season he's coming up with? So third and 14 now, Caldwell running the screen pass. He's got blocking for Johnson, and Johnson breaks away. He's got another block downfield on Drackett and eventually gets run down by DiRoberto and Latrell Hopkins. But a 49-yard reception on a screen pass by A.J. Johnson, and they're inside the 10 and threatening to score. Caldwell throws out to the right side. He's got Reed, who does take it in. Touchdown. Missouri Tech strikes first. Remember, this is a big-time rival. Missouri Tech used to dominate us in the beginning of this series, and they're up 7-0. So here's Carmichael backing onto the field. Quick throw to the right side. It's St. Pierre. He puts on a move and gets to about the 40-yard line gain of 17. Hits a first down. Now, Dunn Carmichael, I think he's fully healthy. First time he has not been on the injury report at all as he hands off to St. Pierre. It's a gain of seven yards. How about the season Pierre is having? He's on the Heisman list and actually doing quite well here in his freshman season. Second and three, a scramble, and Carmichael picks up a block by Edelman. Nice little scamper to the right side down the sideline, and nice block by Jack Edelman, clearing the way for the first down. So Dunn throws across the middle, and he's got Chance Watkins inside the five. Gain of 26. It's a first and goal to go. So here is St. Pierre in the backfield, but we throw across the middle, it's caught. Jack Edelman, touchdown. How about rewarding your receiver for throwing a block for you on the very next play? And it is 7-7 here, as Missouri Tech takes back over after a great kick return. So here's Caldwell trying to scramble out, and he goes down. That is going to be the captain. How about that captain number? Everybody's been playing well with that. Dominique Edwards on the sack. So Caldwell this time tries to scramble again, not this time, Jermaine Neal. He kind of plugs up the middle of the field, preventing Caldwell from scrambling. It brings it to a third and 12. Caldwell from under center, he gets hit on the throw, and it looks like that was Kelly Harrison on the hit, and he ends up forcing the field goal. So here is Dunn Carmichael backing onto the field, buying some time and throwing, and he's got white side. Gain of nine, that's a dangerous throw right there. But second and one, handoff, St. Pierre, big hole. Oh, he gets clocked on that one, but it's a gain of 10. He holds on to it for the first down. So close to the 50 now, Carmichael, they send the blitz, Missouri Tech does. Storm is open across the middle, inside the 20 yard line. Gain of 29, his first catch of the game. Carmichael with a laser. 
So St. Pierre's gonna get the ball in the next carry. He has an open hole, puts on a move, and he's inside the five. Gain of 14 for the true freshman, his third carry of the game. He remains in the game now, first and goal. Hand off, he's in. Touchdown, and the River Cats take the lead here in the first quarter. It's 14 to 10 here for your River Cats. So they start the second quarter with great field position. Caldwell moves out to the right side and tries to pick up the first down. He gets tackled from behind by Osiris Hovick. So second and six, Caldwell throws to the sideline and that is caught by the tight end Ingram and they're inside the five. So here they are on the center here, goal line formation, handoff, A.J. Johnson finds some space and he gets in, it's a touchdown. Missouri Tech strikes right back. 17 to 14 for this Mavericks team. And now it looks like we go into the second quarter in a deadlock pretty much on both sides of the ball. Here's a throw across the middle. It is Chance Watkins. He gets open. Nice touch on that throw. Dunn Carmichael with a nice one. So we're across the 50 now. Carmichael from the shotgun trips to the left side. He's just going to scramble, and he does get tripped up. That one could have been a big game. We had blockers on that one. And that brings it to a third and five from the 31. A counter play, and St. Pierre reaches out for the first down, and he's just short. You got to think Coach Jay's going to go for this one. Fourth and inches, he does. Hand off, big time hole. St. Pierre picks up the first down. It looks like he may be shaken up on that play. So in comes Joe Bashai. So first and 10, Carmichael moves to the right side, buying some time. He's going to stay and throw, and he's got an open man. Isaiah Thomas touchdown. How do you like Isaiah Thomas? Been filling in in spurts this season, and he's made a few big plays. I really love it. That's his third touchdown of the year. It's 21 to 17. So we get the ball back one more time before half. Here's a quick throw. It's Jack Edelman. He picks up a block and gets pushed out of bounds. It's about a gain of 14 yards and a first down. We eventually get into the 47, another counter play. St. Pierre gets to the outside, and he's got speed. And one more block, and Storm gets it. It's a touchdown. How about that? 53 yards for the explosive freshman, St. Pierre. How about Storm downfield? Throwing the block that time. Look at him, just gets in the way. And that one brings it to a two-score game. We move into the second half now. Missouri Tech gets back on the board in a 31 to 24 game. And here is St. Pierre doing more St. Pierre things. He is very elusive and he's got great vision. He's over 100 yards. So Carmichael now throws across the middle. It's Jack Edelman with another catch. And he's inside the 15 yard line. So here he is at the 11 now. Hand off Joe Bashai. great blocking, cuts back upfield. It's a touchdown. How about the vision from Joe Bashai, the junior running back? And that one will be another touchdown for St. Louis. And now we're up by two scores. And now looking to run the ball towards the end of this game, running out this clock, keeping that offense off of the field because we know how dangerous they are. They're seven and one for a reason. So here's St. Pierre from the pistol, hand off to the right side and he's got space. It's a gain of 11, picking up yet another first down. He's got two touchdowns on the ground, 11 yards per carry in this game. So Carmichael moves to the left side, buying some time. It looks like he's going to take it himself and slide down inbounds as we start the fourth quarter. That's a first down scramble. So across the 50 now, handoff. This time it's Jamari Tyson who gets some playing time. And, you know, Tyson, I recruited him to be a power back, but honestly, he's been kind of disappointing. When he's had his opportunities, he's been fumbling. So third and 10 now, Nash in the game. It looks like he throws to the right side. It's St. Pierre giving Dunn Carmichael a little breather on that play, picks up a gain of six. So Carmichael checks back in here, fourth and four. Five and a half minutes left here. Carmichael throws to the right side. Osiris Tucker, he's got it. It's a gain of nine for the true freshman and he picks up the first down. So we get it to about the 25 now. Moving out to the right side is Carmichael, buying some time. He's going to scramble again. He scrambled quite a bit in this game, and he picks up yet another first down for this St. Louis State Rivercats offense. They cannot keep us off the field here. Carmichael stops, throws, white side, falls at the one. Almost had a touchdown on that one, his fourth catch of the game. 
So under center this time, second and goal, a pitch out to left side, and St. Pierre's got space. It's a touchdown. And how about this? We go ahead and beat our rivals here by two scores. It ends up being 45 to 30 as they scored a garbage time touchdown, but a great victory. Another top 10 beat team we beat in this series. Man, have we been, it's just so funny. We are just so good against top 10 teams. I don't know what it is. Even when we weren't that good of a team in season three, we even upset Tulsa State. You remember that when they were ranked number five in the nation and we upset them. That pretty much wrecked their program because ever since then, Tulsa State has not recovered. In Missouri Tech, ever since losing Pat Perez, they have not been this good. And he was in the stands for this game, and they go home with a loss. But, but St. Louis State continues this season going into the later parts, just thriving at this point. Jermaine Neal had three sacks, Edwards had a sack, and Thousand had a sack. All of our defensive linemen had a sack in this game. Sean Caldwell, we made him look pedestrian. We also had two interceptions. So we hop into the second game of this doubleheader. We are number one in the NCAA in points per game with 40. That just shows how dominant we have been. But we come away with that game with some unfortunate news. Kelly Harrison is out with a foot fracture, which will effectively end his season. So let's get into some highlights of this Texas A&M matchup. They are also not that good this year, but they do run the triple option offense, which makes it completely different when you play against them because they can be really, really good even when they have a bad record. So here is Carmichael in the first, second quarter throwing to the end zone, and it's a touchdown chance. Watkins, how about Carmichael spreading the wealth? I mean, we have not really had a game or even a stretch of games where we've kind of like solidified a star with this receiving core has pretty much been anybody ever give any given week so here's texas a&m back on an offense and look at this throw by the quarterback breaking a ta tackle and anderson throws all the way downfield completing that pass off of his back foot so here is michael smith they're running back now for texas a&m no more chance tyree they've been rebuilding ever since he left as well so Carmichael, we do get them to settle for the field goal. Here he is back on the field, throwing across the middle of the field. What a throw to Zane Storm. I have no idea how he even saw him on that play. So now getting towards halftime, Carmichael buying time. He's going to stop and throw, and he's got Eric Macklin. Gain of 19. He was hurt for quite a few games. It was about four games, but now he's back and fully healthy. Gain of 19. So Carmichael now back on the field, throws across the middle, looking for Storm. It's picked off by Mangum, who's already picked Dunn Carmichael off two times in his career. And it ends up being a face mask, and Texas A&M ends up capitalizing and tying this game up at 10. So getting towards halftime, here we are back on offense in St. Pierre. A nice catch inside the 15, getting it to a goal-to-go -go situation. So Carmichael moves to the right side, buying time, gonna throw to the end zone, and it's caught. Jack Edelman, he's in, eight yards out, and how about this? Dunn Carmichael is pretty much making everybody look good on this offense. So here's Anderson backing onto the field, Texas A&M still staying in this game before halftime, and they call a timeout. Now they have one timeout before halftime, all they need is a couple more yards. Anderson now from the sh under center, throws the left side. He's got Brown who steps out. And that's a two second, uh, that's two seconds left on the clock. They end up lining up for the field goal and this one is way off. He had the distance on that one. That was from about 57 yards and he had a bunch of clearance. So now we start the second half with a throw and that is an open man and a touchdown that Dunn Carmichael missed. And man, would he like to have that throw back. So third and 14, Carmichael throws deep and he kind of underthrows it a little bit and it's knocked away. Storm got behind the defense. So one throw he overthrows, one is an underthrow. And now that gives an opportunity for Texas A&M to get right back in this game. They're only down by four. But here is Ryan Anderson trying to run this triple option and he gets stopped. Osiris Hovick on that tackle, his third tackle for loss in this game. 
So 17 to 13, towards the end of the third quarter, Carmichael throws across the middle. He's got Storm open, a big time gain for 30 yards. Storm has looked impressive in spurts this year and he picks up a nice gain and a nice catch. So here's Carmichael, moves to the left side, throws to the sideline, caught. Eric Macklin inside the 10, keeping this one interesting. So here we are inside the five now for a second and goal. Quick throw, Isaiah Thomas, touchdown. How about Thomas here in his senior season? He hasn't been a guy that's got a ton of playing time, but you gotta love how he fills in and it makes it a 24 to 13 game. So here we are throwing deep with two minutes left and it's gonna be picked off by Robinson. What a play. Looking for Storm in the exclamation point on this game and that was an excellent play by the Texas A&M cornerback. So they do come all the way back across the field and Ryan Anderson throws to Cole Williams. Cole Williams is actually one of the best slot receivers in the nation. And that one brings it to a three point game and one last chance onside kick and it's recovered in the St. Louis State Rivercats will hold on to win this game is now here in garbage time. They use all three timeouts. St. Pierre gets one more carry, and he gets space to the left side and does fall to the pylon. Touchdown, St. Pierre. How about this River Cats team? I mean, this is just a different identity I thought that we would have this year. I thought we would be passing the ball and be dominant, which we are, but running the football has truly been a weapon here in this season. I thought that losing J.J. Hollinson would definitely result in some regression, but you can already see St. Pierre just, he adds a different dynamic to this team. And you just see it week in and week out. He doesn't even have to touch the ball in every play, but he just has a big impact. Zane Storm finally getting the ball consistently, and you can see he's making a difference over 100 yards once again on the season. And then defensively, our defensive line is playing great right now. Jermaine Neal and Jonathan Thousand are having excellent seasons right now. And so is Dominique Edwards. He's doing very, very well stopping the run, not so much stopping the pass, but having a great season on his own. So let's just look at our recruiting board. We do have a bunch of recruits that have committed. You know about the three of you, Evgeny Orlov, Troy Hollinson, Chris Casey, but then we have Jack Veneer, who is a very good man cover corner. I've been uh, really highly recruiting him, and he does commit after these last couple of victories. Two cornerbacks that will be the cornerstone of this team. Lee Ramirez commits. Now he was the number two athlete in the nation and he is very, very dynamic with the ball in his hands. You can already see he's gonna be in the upper 70s overall as a true freshman. And then we have a quarterback recruit in Desmond Baker. Now, maybe Baker to Ramirez will be a duo to look forward to in the future. Baker is the number 11 quarterback in the nation. And honestly, he is kind of a pocket passer. He reminds me a little bit of Ty Featherstone, but a little bit more mobile. But I think he's mobile enough. Kind of like Phoenix Frazier was in the beginning of this series. You know, Phoenix Frazier wasn't a very mobile guy, but he can move around when he needed to. So we are nine and one, number four in the top 25, but number two in the BCS polls, even above Florida, who we lost to in the opener. And you can see San Diego State was ranked number one. They lost to Fresno State. Now let's see how we will end this season. Will we upset? I think this could be an upset. Even though we're ranked higher than them, Alabama is really highly touted here this season. I think Kirk Herbstreit is going with them this game. And we also have MSTAM to end this season. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. Next, next episode, we will play the final two games. So stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.